Hi everybody, this is Jenny from Miami Lit. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a while since I've done one of these stationary item videos, so I'm glad to be back in this in this part of my little YouTube space. If you have been here before due to, to the stationary videos, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy today's video. If you are here through our Miami Lit podcast, uh, let me know down below, do you dabble in, you know, planning, journaling, stationary type of thing? I, I would be interested to know. Uh, just to give you a little background about Miami Lit Podcast, even though that's not what this video is about, just to let you know what, what we've been doing. The podcast is a project that has been on my mind for over a year and a half now. So I am so excited that it finally came into fruition. Uh, through the podcast, we experience culture, literature, uh, mostly local to Miami, but not necessarily. And we've had some really amazing guests, some amazing authors and people in the community. So I am super proud of our little podcast. I'm so grateful for the the feedback that you guys have provided it's been it's been wonderful so if you haven't checked it out and it sounds like something you'd be interested in go ahead and do so i would be happy to hear what you have to say but to get into today's video um i have been enjoying my fountain pens if you've been here before you you know my very my very modest but perfect collection perfect for me anyway this is a superior labor pen roll, by the way, which has already been blessed with some ink marks. It does not bother me. I actually think it, you know, it is what it is. It's, it lives here in my real life, and that's what happens. But today I want to talk to you about my Pilot Vanishing Point fountain pen. It is coming up on two and a half years old, and I, I realized... I don't really have a video dedicated to this pen, even though it's one of my favorites that I own. So in case you're not familiar, the Pilot Vanishing Point is special because it is a clicker fountain pen. Oops, sorry. It is a clicker fountain pen, which is not very common. So you can, by clicking here on the back, you can uh, have access to the nib quickly. And that makes it um, super, super convenient to use uh, if you're on the go all the time plus the design is absolutely gorgeous i i i love it i can't say enough about it it has this minimalistic yet uh you know up with the times futuristic feel this particular color that i have the matte black looks so sleek so elegant like it's it's a timeless piece, you know, like a for all the ladies out there, like a good bag or for the gentleman, you know, a nice briefcase or a wallet that you just know you can have for for your entire life and pass it on and it's not going to go out of style and the quality is going to be there. That's what I feel like this pen is. Um, but uh, to continue saying it's good prices, it has this clip here which before purchasing the pen, one of my concerns was that it would bother me to write because as you can see, the pen is facing the nib. So it's, um, it's not like a traditional pen where the clip is on top. This one's on the bottom so that when you click it, the nib is facing up and it's safe. But I'm happy to report it has never been a problem for me at all. Another concern was that this is the the thicker one, I believe there's a the decimal version, which is uh, much thinner and sleeker. Um, and they come in different colors and different variations. But I, this one was the one that caught my attention. So I was always concerned this would be too thick and bothersome to write. But that has not been a problem either. Um, it, it's been perfect. So let's go ahead and test it out. This is a fine nib. And it's currently inked with um, Noodler's Heart of Darkness, which I, I love. This is actually my only black ink now that I think about it. And it is awesome. I love this ink. So this is a Hobonichi 
Day Free notebook, which has Tomo River paper, which is very fountain pen friendly. So let me, let's test it out. This is the Pilot Vanishing Point in a fine nib. Uh, this is the matte black. And it's perfect. It glides perfectly. It's not scratchy at all. The line is, uh, you know, the right thickness is fine, but not so fine that, again, feels scratchy. I'm more of a, I like the medium nibs. That's my sweet spot. And I figured that out after purchasing this pen. However, I, I don't regret that this is a fine nib because this is such an on-the-go pen. I'd rather take a fine nib with me because the line is obviously thinner, so it dries up way faster. I would not, for personal preference, do an extra fine in, in any pen, actually. I feel like part of the experience of a fountain pen is, you know, having that ink flow and laying those beautiful lines down. But that's just me. If you enjoy an extra fine nib, that's, that's awesome. So this is my pen. It's been put to use over the past two years and a half, uh, almost daily, on and off. And he is in perfect condition. He. Do you give a gender to your pens? It is in perfect condition. Um, no, no, like nothing happening to the paint. No scratches. Nothing fading. It is absolutely perfect. And I am very, very happy with this purchase. If, not that I want this to happen, but if something were ever to happen to this pen, I would repurchase in a heartbeat. In the same color, same everything. This is just perfect for me. If you feel like, you know, the black is, is too much, there are several color options. There are um, limited editions. There's a lot um for you to choose from when it comes to the vanishing point. And like I said, there's a decimal version, which is a little bit uh, thinner, the barrel. So let's talk about the only thing that I wish was different, but I understand why it cannot be different. So it's, it's kind of a mute point. But when you look at the ink capacity, um, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this is a gold nib. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I can take this out. Well, maybe like this. I want to make a mess. Um, this is how much ink it can hold. And as you see, it's not a lot. And I'm used to, with my other pens, um, really having much more ink. So this took some getting used to. And I just... You know, you automatically figure out your rhythm and you know that every, you know, every four to five days you have to refill. So once you get used to that, it's obviously not a problem. But I do wish that the barrel could have more ink. But I understand. I mean, this is a clicker, so it has a different mechanism. And... It's, it's just perfect in every way, shape, or form. If you don't own a Pilot Vanishing Point, the writing experience is excellent. The craftsmanship, everything is excellent. And I'm, I'm willing to bet you would not be disappointed in this pen. Not even one bit. Um, but here, let me show you what I mean when I say, for example, the Twisby, which needs to be cleaned and inked, obviously, you have a large capacity in the barrel. Um, the Pilot, not, oh my goodness, not Pilot, I'm so sorry, Pelican. Also, this is another one of my favorites. Um, you know what, really quickly, and this is kind of silly because I'm very careful about what pens I add to my collection, so these are all my favorites, but if I had to pick three pens, that I need to have in my life. I just, I can't let go. Definitely these three. The Pelican M400, the Lamy 2000, and the Pilot Vanishing Point.
this is like my trifecta of pens this is just perfect for me but like i said my collection is very curated so i do love all these pens i love my pie my lamy i keep calling all them pilots i'm sorry my lamy safari this one is in a medium nib so it is so buttery and the lines are just juicy and i i love it love writing on this pen here i have a Quebeco Sport, um, and I believe I have a video with my pen collection, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I love this pen, and I also love my Quebeco uh, Brass Sport. This one is about five years old, and you can see how much the brass has patinaed, and I just, I love this little pen. So this one would, who am I kidding? I like all of them. I really, really like all of them. Um, then I have a Sailor, which, um, oh, I need to clean this. S the Sailor is, I don't know. I like it. I think it's a beautiful pen. But when it comes to the nib, it's not as buttery as I was expecting it to be. It's not like my Pelican or my Nami. Um, so I'm, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, maybe I need to play with it some more. And then I have this one here, which I never use anymore. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll pass it on to someone like a fountain pen newbie. This is a great start. Um, but it's, it's, it's a great pen. There's nothing wrong with it. I just, I have so many others and I don't use that one but um i'm i'm definitely i've been able to slowly collect pens that i really enjoy writing with and offer a great great experience um, since we are talking fountain pens and we mentioned inks i thought i would show you my also um small ink collection i'm get overwhelmed by a lot of choices. So I am very, very careful into when I think about what I'm gonna add to, to my collection. So these have been chosen very carefully and there are so many beautiful fountain pen inks from so many different brands that it's definitely overwhelming and I've definitely stopped trying to to see what's out there because i find myself just adding to my my wish list um there's a the jane austen ink i forget who makes it but that one has been on my list for a while because it just looks beautiful so as we said the i have noodlers heart of darkness and i there most of this is noodlers just because they're made in the usa and I believe in supporting American companies. And they're handmade and the price cannot be beat. Plus they are so, so beautiful. I am in love with them. So this one brings the dropper. Um, and this one is a bulletproof ink, if I'm not mistaken. If I am somebody, please correct me down below. Next, we have uh, Noodler's Walnut. This one is really nice. I like using this one in my Pelican. It's such a pretty combination with the with the white and the gold. And then this ink. This ink is, well, like the name suggests, Walnut uh, Brown. So here, let me... Oops, that was too thick. Sorry about that. And... As you can see, hopefully you can see it. See how pretty that brown is? I am making such a mess, but it's okay. It's fun. Next I have, okay, this is my second bottle of this ink because it is hands down my number one favorite ink of all time, just all time. If you have not tried this ink, you need to. You need to. It doesn't matter if you like this shade. You just need to try it. Get a sample. 
because you will not be disappointed. So this is Nuller's Apache Sunset. And it is like an orange yellow, but it's a lot more than that. Because depending on your nib size and the paper that you're using, you'll get different tones. So you, it literally looks like a sunset, like there'll be reds, um, oranges, pinks, yellows. It's amazing. Oh, that was not very, that did not work out well. Hopefully you can see that. Here, let me, let me bring it up. There we go. So see how uh, you get all these different tones. And if you were to use, um, you know, like a medium, medium nib, the colors really, really pop up. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, here I have 54th Massachusetts, which is also very nice ink. This, this glass dip pen is just not working today. I don't know. I mean, obviously it's me, the pen doesn't change, but anyway. So this is like a teal, most of the time comes out like a teal and is really pretty. I really, really enjoy this ink. I'm a sucker for blues, so I try not to go too crazy because I could have all the blues in the world. But so far, this has been... Oh, pardon the dust. This has been my favorite blue. This is also my second bottle. Of all these inks, I've only repurchased uh, two times, which is Apache Sunset and uh, Iroshisuku. Uh, should I even try saying this? I feel like I'm gonna butcher it. So here, I love this ink. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the bottle, the design. Like it's so, it's so fancy. Um, and just the the hues of this blue. It's like the perfect blue. This is also like the Apache Sunset. Depending on your nib size, you'll get different. Um, different hues to the blue. So you'll get a lot of, um, you know, light blues, some more dark blues. Let me move, let's move a little bit so you can have a better view. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, Bad Green Gator. This is one of my recent purchases. And by recent, I mean like probably a year ago. I haven't, I've been so good. I haven't really, bought too many stationary supplies over the past year. I tried to be sensible. So let's see if I can continue with that. Um, so this is like a, a forest green, I would call it. And I love it. I love this green. If you like greens, this is a really, really good one. It reminds me of, um, you know, like a leaf it's not you know like a pukey green it's not so dark that it looks black you can tell it's green so this is a good one uh the very famous lexington gray if you've been around in the planning and journaling community you're aware of lexington gray and its fame comes for a reason this is an awesome ink and if you like that pencil look, this one does not disappoint. Again, uh, Noodlers is really good at this. Their uh, inks do look like the color they claim to be. Because I don't know, sometimes I've gotten some samples, you know, and I've wanted a green and it's too dark that it looks black or, you know, something else. 
This is my, my latest one. This was my last purchase, uh, Socrates, because I was craving a purple. And picking a purple was so overwhelming. There's so many choices. So obviously the name got to me, Socrates. I had to have it. There was no, no more options after seeing that. And I love it because I keep repeating myself, uh, like Apache Sunset, depending on your nib size, you will get, you know, fuchsia, uh, purple, plum. So I really, really like all the range that you get. Then here we have another famous one, um, J. Herbon, uh, and it's, it's so famous that I don't remember the name. Emerald of Chivor, I believe it's called. And I know that's not how you pronounce it, but I don't speak French. So this was one of my first inks that I ever purchased. Um, actually went in this order. I got this one, this one, and this one. These were my first ink orders. And it might not be a surprise that I'm so attached to all these three. No wonder they're my favorites. So I love, I love blues and, uh, you know, teals and greens. So this one is amazing because it has shimmer. And again, depending on your nib size, you will pick up on all these different colors and properties. And this one is just so, so beautiful. I love using this one with the Lamy Safari that I showed you that has the medium nib. It is gorgeous. So here we go. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. I, I just, I love it. I love it. And this brand in particular also has so many amazing colors. So I don't even look because I know I'm going to end up wanting all of them. There's like a, like a, I think it's like a dark purple. Something moon It's the name that looks so interesting. And a tea one, tea leaf or something like that. Um, this one came with this glass dip pen also from J Herbon. And I believe this is sepia. I haven't really used this one, um, so let's test it out together. I thought it was it was interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it does look like sepia. Um, maybe like a shade or two lighter than walnut, so that's nice. Okay, I'm happy to have it. Never going to say no to fountain pen ink. So this is my ink collection. I think it's going to stay like this for a while because as you can see, all these bottles are still very full. So I'm not going to be adding anything anytime soon. I want to, I feel like I have all the colors that I enjoy. And I want to get through some of these before adding any more. But if you have a fountain pen ink that you feel like I should absolutely try, please let me know down below because it's different when someone makes a recommendation than to just, you know, go on the website and just look through. It's, at least for me, it's very overwhelming. The choices are super, there's a lot and somehow everything's looks great and at the same time it all looks the same i don't know if that happens to you but anyway to uh end this video the pilot vanishing point beautiful pen you will not regret it it's a beautiful writing experience it's a great on the go pen if you uh you know if you're back in the office uh if you have uh, meetings this pen is so uh, ergonomic you know it fits in your hand perfectly it flows the fact that you can just click it is again 
can't say enough good things and uh thank you so much for being here with me if you've checked out our podcast again i'm so so grateful if you are here for the stationary videos thank you as well because this is also uh, another joy of mine and i'm so happy that you can share this with me and i hope you're well and i will see you soon bye